I once tried snowboarding and it really hurt. So is there any easier way that I could possibly learn? We're going to look at how virtual reality technology, developed by the Romano Group at the University of Sheffield, coupled with global positioning data obtained from a real mountain, can be used to hopefully accelerate the learning process. Can you see 3D now? Can you see the difference between the 3 yeah. and the 3 when it's 2D? Wow. We're going to look at two very different children. Alex really doesn't play that much sport, but he is into computer gaming. By contrast, Hannah has been skiing competitively since she was around five years old, but she hasn't snowboarded. The first task was to look at the physiological responses to balance exercises, looking at increases in skin conductance and heart rate as the exercises were performed. As might be expected, this showed a slight increase in the level of excitement. The children then moved on to the simulator where they navigated Stratton Mountain, USA on an interfaced balance board. Again, the physiological response of a number of children was monitored, but this time a much larger increase in the level of excitement was observed. However, this was just a two-dimensional simulation and the real power of the virtual reality system comes in the three-dimensional image. Unfortunately, using standard video, we can't see that three-dimensional image. We just see a shadow. In order to get the full 3D effect, the children wear special liquid crystal glasses which have shutters over each eye. The shutters switch on and off very quickly, left right, left right, and they trick the brain into believing that it's seeing a true three-dimensional image. The effect is so strong that you actually feel as though you're immersed in the surroundings. The result is a far greater enhancement in the level of excitement. One of the big surprises was that Alex took to the simulator very quickly and became quite proficient. He was able to navigate the mountain and do several quite complex tricks. This is probably because he perceived it as being a game. Some of the more sports-minded children actually struggled and became quite rigid on the simulator. Again, a big surprise. Initially, Hannah struggled, but this is probably because she's a skier and therefore had to rotate her body through 90 degrees to her normal mode of travel. Eventually though, her body position began to mimic that of the border in the simulation and her skill levels increased. But did using the simulator actually help in the transition from silicon to snow? We took the children to Snow Zone, the indoor snow sports centre in Castleford. Armed only with the simulator training, we put them into a real snow environment. The children went through a series of exercises which tested their skills against a series of awards called the Snow Life Awards. Usually to pass at level 1, the boarders would have to go through several hours of instruction. Here, they've just had a couple of hours on the simulator. One of the first things we noticed was that the children had incredibly good balance on the boards. This really isn't that common for a beginner on a snowboard. Secondly, they were able to do straight runs down the slope. This usually isn't introduced until maybe the second or third lesson. The fact that the simulator encourages the boarders to go straight down the hill obviously helped here. In fact, they showed a degree of confidence that really wasn't expected. The level of performance continued throughout the lesson, and in fact, after only half an hour, they passed at level one. The class was divided into three groups of roughly equal ability based on what we'd seen on the simulator. With a few surprising exceptions, this translated well onto the snow. Hannah made the transition to snow remarkably well. She was able to do little jumps and do the more difficult toe slide as well as the conventional heel slide. Others, like Briny here, built on the experience of the simulator and made huge improvements on the snow. Perhaps the biggest surprise was Alex. After only a short period on the snow, he was able to go from the top of the nursery slope in a straight line with remarkable control. Progress in general was rapid and the children were starting to do some quite complex manoeuvres. The full session lasted around two hours and most of the children 
got through level 1 with no difficulty. Six of the group actually passed at level 2. Now that's not usually achieved until after about four hours of instruction. While this is only a feasibility study, we now feel confident to be able to go on and show that virtual reality can not only be used as a gaming tool, but also as a valuable training aid in sport.